What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and on this week's episode of Storytime, I'm gonna be sharing with you the story of how I recorded six entire songs in one session with Beyonce. She's an absolute savage, it's insane. But before we get started, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, hit the notification bell, run the intro. What's up guys, my name is DJ Swivel and we are back for another episode of Storytime. Um, this week's episode is another Beyonce story. I have a ton of them, I'm trying to spread them out. I don't wanna like clump too much of them together but uh, I got so many amazing comments on the last Beyonce story recording Love on Top, I thought I would share another one that I think has a very valuable lesson uh, to be learned from it. Um, this story uh, of course takes place during the recording of the four album. Uh, so I think this probably happened, uh, sometime in 2010, probably summer of 2010 is my guess, but the, the exact days and everything is a little hazy. Um, and this is the story of how we recorded six entire songs with Beyonce in one session. Um, now for those of you who are not engineers or producers, that's a big deal. If I get one full song from a singer done in one day, that's a productive day. To get six songs done is inhuman. It's, it's just, it's not done. Rappers can do it. It's a lot easier and quicker to record a rap song than it is a completely uh, produced out um, uh, pop vocal or R&B vocal. Uh, but for singers who have to do you know, lead vocals, in tune, comp them, uh, background vocals, harmonies, stacking it all, building out ad libs, getting a nice mix on all those vocals. Sometimes you got 50 or 60 vocal tracks. Uh, that usually takes a lot of time. And so if we get one song done in a day for most artists, I feel pretty good. And we got six done with Beyonce. So it just tells you what type of professional she really is. Um, so anyways, the story starts uh, at about our normal start time, which is probably around two in the afternoon, early afternoon on a Friday afternoon. Now, just to set it up, we had been working the last two weeks straight, no days off, 16 hour days, 80, 100 hours a week, like just really grinding and, and recording a ton of music. We recorded about 75 songs for that four album. Um, and so, uh, she was going on vacation. She had a vacation planned. Uh, her and Jay were going to go to Italy or something on Sunday. So I thought, okay, we're going to come in Friday, have a nice full workday Friday. And, uh, and then we'll probably come in Saturday as well, have another full day of work. And then Sunday she will take off during the morning. And I don't know when her flight left, but at some point she would leave on Sunday uh, to go on vacation. I think it was an evening flight. So, uh, so we come in early uh, Friday afternoon, we get started, we record one song uh, and you know, we record all the lead vocals, we comp the lead. So if you don't know what, if you're not an engineer or producer, you don't know what comping means. Comping is when you, uh, you'll record like five of the exact same lead vocal, five takes of it, and then you'll comp it together. You'll take the best line from every uh, take. Right, so if on take three, the opening line is best on take three, but then the second line is best on take five, you'll like combine them all to make like a super take. Um, now for most singers, this is actually a pretty quick process because usually there'll be an auto tune on their vocals. So that's already cleaning up any pitch inconsistencies or issues, which Beyonce does not use. Um, and then on top of that, sometimes they'll have like clearly bad vocals where they're just getting into it and then you'll notice the ones that really shine through and are great, they'll stand out. With Beyonce, it's not like that. All of her vocals are so great, you end up spending more time comping even though the quality of the vocal is better because now you're spending time listening over and over and over again to make sure, well, what was better? Was take three better or take five better for that opening line? I don't know, they're both pretty close. They're both really good. Um, you know, and I take my job seriously. I want to find the best one. So I'm going to listen to it 10 times until I find the best one. So the point is that it takes 
longer to comp a Beyonce vocal than it does to comp, uh, you know, most other singers that I've worked with. So anyways, we record one complete song and then, you know, we take a break for a bite to eat, dinner maybe, uh, maybe she has a meeting, then we start recording a second song. Now this is normal. We've recorded two songs in a day. That's easy. Um, we record a second song, nothing out of the ordinary here. Uh, then she'll take a few more meetings and you know, there's always things that break up the day, right? Her assistant will come in and say, Hey, I have your publicist on the phone. She got to talk to you about something or I have your lawyer. You got to talk to you about something. Um, you know, you have a meeting coming in at this time, you know, just want to let you know. So you're ready for it. Little things like that. Uh, and, and between that and meals, which you got to eat, uh, there's a number of breaks throughout the day. Uh, but for the most part, she grinds through and, and we're not taking many breaks. Um, so we get the, th we get the second song done. Then we start working on a third song and we get it done. And at this point, by the time we finished the third song, uh, I, it, I remember it was, it was early Saturday morning. The sun was starting to rise. It, it was probably six in the morning, seven in the morning, maybe Saturday morning. We're exhausted. I've been in the studio at that point for about 18 hours, long day, starting to feel tired. And that would be the point where normally she would get up and say, all right, I think I'm done for the day. Uh, see you tomorrow. She never said that. She just kind of hung out and we just kind of hung out in the studio for a bit. And I noticed she, we finished the third song and she was not in any hurry to leave. And so I thought, okay, well, looks like we might keep going here for a little bit longer. Uh, so I thought, all right, well, I need a little bit of energy. Um, you know, even B was getting tired, you know, we're all human. Uh, so I thought, all right, let's, I sent the assistant to go run and grab, uh, three, five hour energies. I think I had one, B had one. And I think her assistant and or, um, her cousin, Angie had one. Um, and, uh, so we, we all have a five hour energy. It gives us a little bit of a boost. We feel uh, a little bit better, uh, about ourselves, uh, you know, if any of you have had one of those energy shots, it really does give you a nice jolt of energy. Um, and so at, at some point, maybe half an hour, an hour later, we start recording a fourth song. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess we're really going to keep going here. Um, we get a fourth song done. Now I'm guessing it's about noon, maybe one o'clock. So we have been at the studio for close to 24 hours now. And I thought, okay, now for sure she's going to go home. She doesn't go home. So we start recording a fifth song. Now at this point, I'm like, oh, we're in this for the long haul. We're probably not going to go home at 4 p.m. Like we're, she's probably going to stay. You know, you're, I mean, when you, when you book a studio, you book like in blocks, right? And she might book 24 hour blocks. So once you pass that 24 hours, like you might as well stay. You're into the next day already, right? Um, and so... Now I realize, all right, we're, we're going to be here all night. We're going to be here for probably close to 40 hours. Like she's not going to leave until maybe she'll leave early. Maybe she'll leave at 10 PM tonight. Uh, but I knew that I was getting tired. So I sent the assistant, uh, to go and get a case of five hour energies because they seem to like give us a, a, that lift that we needed, you know, a few hours earlier, five hours earlier. So I was like, let's get a box of them and then we'll have a few to, you know, if we're going to keep going, we'll be able to have that energy. Um, and you know, to be honest, I was so exhausted at this point, you know, as I'm doing takes on that, that, uh, that fourth song, even after the five hour energy, uh, towards the end of it, you know, I'm like kind of dozing off and getting like a 15 second power nap in, in the mid while she's in the booth. And this is an interesting skill. Like most engineers who work long hours, acquire this skill of being able to like close your eyes and get like 20 seconds, 30 seconds of like rest. And then you, you have this natural ability to just hear when they stop singing or rapping or whoever is you're working with, uh, when they stop performing and then you just magically wake up and you're like, okay, cool. Another take. Yeah. Ready. And then, and then you go and doze off again. So I noticed myself doing that. So that's why I got the box of five hour energies and, uh, you know, I want to make sure I'm there for, for B. And she actually asked, she's like, Hey, like if you need to rest, like we have an assistant here, um, who I'm sure, you know, can, can record. 
And I'm like competitive. I'm like, you're not going to sleep. I'm not going, no way. I'm, I'm in this. We're in this together, girl. So, um, so anyways, she starts recording a fifth song. And at this point, I'm exhausted. We're dozing off. Uh, so I take another five hour energy. Her cousin takes one uh, and B takes one. Uh, and then she takes a few more meetings and I'm, you know, tired again. And, you know, so I take another one and I think she takes another one. Uh, and then we record a sixth song. And, uh, and at that point I've probably had four or five, five hour energies by the time we finish that sixth song. Uh, we finish, it's probably early Sunday morning. So it would have been, I think we probably left the studio around six, seven, seven thirty AM Sunday morning. Could have even been eight. I don't know. Uh, and, but I do know that it was light outside and the city was starting to move again. Right. So that's probably around seven, eight AM. Uh, so we finally wrap up. We've had a number of five hour energies. We're like wired, but also tired. And we've been in the studio for almost 40 hours straight with no sleep, no rest. Uh, she's about ready to go on vacation. I, which means I finally get a little two week break myself. So we're all looking forward to our little break. And we also all feel very like productive and, and energized that we got so much done in this session, which really as a creative, if you get more, a song done, like you, you get a, a nice, there's a really great feeling when you accomplish creating something new. Um, and so, uh, so I go home. And as soon as I get home, uh, my head hits, hits, uh, as soon as my head hits the pillow, I'm out. So I get some rest. Uh, it's probably, I fall asleep maybe eight 30. Uh, and I wake up somewhere around four 30, five o'clock. I probably get eight, nine hours of sleep and I feel great. I wake up, I feel really good. I feel energized. Um, and, uh, I suspect B probably did the same cause she had an evening flight where she was going to head out to, uh, for her vacation. So I wake up, I feel good. My vacation's starting, my break is starting. And I was invited to a family friend's uh, party uh, up in Jersey. So I go up there with a friend of mine and uh, I get to the party. I have a drink, I have a bite to eat. I feel pretty good. But about halfway through the party, something's not sitting right. Like I'm just not feeling good. And it wasn't that my stomach was upset. Um, I just started to feel like I was getting a flu. I was like, oh, that I must have just worn myself out. Like, this is this is not good. So I go into a corner of the party. I'm not really talking to anybody. I'm just kind of laying down, you know, trying to feel better. And and I went out there. We were in sort of northern, we're in New Jersey, and I went with a friend. So I, you know, we had a ride out there. Um, so I'm not feeling very good. And my friend who I went out there with, Jeremy, he comes up to me. He's like, hey, Swiv, you don't look too good. Um, are you feeling okay? And I said, no, I feel awful. I don't know what's going on. I feel terrible. Um, I need to get home. He's like, oh, great. I'm tired anyways. I'm ready to go. Why don't we leave? So we all left. Uh, he goes back to his place. I go back to my place. Uh, and the moment I walk in the door, I become freezing cold. And it's not that my apartment was cold. Um, I just get very, very cold and I get straight into bed. I'm like, I got to sleep this one off. And I couldn't sleep right away. I'm shivering. At this point, I'm under the covers. I'm shivering. I've never shaken so much in my life. Cold sweats. I know I'm hot. I'm, my whole body is sweating, but I'm freezing cold, shivering. It was like I was in Alaska, you know, in a tank top <laughs> in the middle of winter. It was freezing. Um, but finally, I get to sleep. And then I wake up the next morning and I'm not feeling a hundred percent, but I feel much better. I don't have the, the cold sweats anymore. I don't have the shakes. I just feel like beaten up kind of my body feels beaten up. Um, so anyways, and then throughout that day, I get a, a bite to eat in me, drink a bunch of water. I feel a lot better. Um, so anyways, now I'm looking forward to enjoying my, uh, <laughs> my, uh, little break. Uh, my little 24 hour bug or whatever it was, 12 hour bug even, uh, is now gone. I feel good. Okay, cool. F about five days later, I get a call from Beyonce's assistant saying, Hey, are you available? Are you ready to get back in the studio tomorrow? And I said, what do you mean? B's in Italy, isn't she? Uh, you know, she's not due to be back for another 
10 days or so. And she's like, yeah, no, she, she's coming back early. She's ready to get back in the studio. And I thought, wow, wow, we've been working so hard. Uh, you've only been gone for five days and you're ready to get back. That is insane to me. That's dedication. So, uh, so I'm like, sure, I'll be there. So my vacation gets cut short. Uh, I show up to the studio the next day. B uh, comes in, uh, you know, hi B, how are you? How was your vacation? Uh, and she said it was great, had an awesome time. You know, I just really wanted to get back and, and keep working on this album. And I thought, wow, that, that's like to cut your vacation short, that's, that takes a lot. And I'm sure, you know, plenty of money was spent and whatever to like plan a two week vacation. And, you know, no, I want to get back in the studio. And that's exactly what she did. But she said something interesting. She goes, the whole vacation was great, except that night I flew out. I felt like I was going to die. Like I felt horrible. Um, I had just cold sweats and everything. I was like, my eyes lit up. I was like, you too? I had the same thing. And then it clicked. The five hour energies. We both drank way more than you're supposed to drink. Of course, we didn't read the label. I didn't really think to read the label or anything. We just thought five hour energy. We need a little energy. So we're all taking them. And of course, we both got violently ill. Um, and <laughs> I thought that was uh, kind of funny and, and uh, obviously it didn't last very long. So um, it, it all worked out. Um, so that's one lesson of this story is don't drink more than one five hour energy. Probably don't even drink the one, to be honest with you. I've never drank one since. Um, but the real, uh, the real moral of the story, the real lesson to be learned here is find that thing that you love that you are willing to leave vacation for and come back and grind and get right back to the grind. Find that thing and you are going to live an amazing life because, you know, life comes at you from so many different angles and we spend a lot of time, you know, just looking forward to those vacations or the weekends or those breaks or those moments when we can relax. But if you make the job that you choose, the thing that you spend most of your time on, if you make that something that you absolutely have an extreme passion for, um, you'll never work a day in your life. And that's what I recognized uh, when B decided to cut her vacation short. That's what that was. That was her getting back to the thing that she's most passionate about. And um, I'm not mad at that in any way because that's how I feel about producing and songwriting and mixing and all the things that I do. Um, and so I suspect that's exactly how she feels about making albums and touring and, and all those things. So um, that is the lesson. Find the thing that you love, go after it, make it your thing, and you will never work a day in your life. You will live the most fulfilled life you can ever imagine. Um, and, and that's how I've genuinely felt. Uh, throughout my career. So anyways, that is story time for the week. Uh, we learned that Beyonce is an absolute savage and will work 40 hours straight, no problem. Uh, we learned that five hour energy is not to be taken lightly. That is dangerous stuff. And we learned that finding your passion in life is so key to living a fulfilled life. Um, so that is story time for this week. Uh, I'm DJ Swivel. I will see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace. Peace.